Hello everyone, you're welcome back to the Irish Mammy channel. Um, today I'm going to bring you f uh, around the garden with me. Uh, in the vegetable garden I have a load of jobs to do. The sun's actually out at the minute, but um, we've had an awful week of rain. Um, the garden is absolutely sopping. And we actually have a um, rain warning for tonight, yellow rain warning for tonight. Um, but for the moment it's dry. Uh, but after tonight I see rain in the forecast for every day over this long weekend. So um, I'm trying to get as much done as I can today um, to save me having to do a pile of work over the weekend. Or, well, I'll not get it done over the weekend. So if I don't get it done now, um, realistically it's probably going to have to wait till the spring. And these jobs that I'm doing today, sometimes I get them done in um, the autumn. Uh, but some day, sometimes it waits till spring and well to be honest sometimes it actually waits till um, the summertime when I'm ready to plant in the beds again. Um, and I know summer gone by that's the way it ended up. Everything was the last minute getting beds cleared out and uh, replanted again then for the summer. So trying to be a bit more organised this year. Get the beds cleared out now. Um, get them chopped up with compost. Um, I'm going to cover them. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put cardboard on them or cover them with my pecs just to um, stop, you know, like soil erosion on them. But um, one way or the other, I'll be covering them over with something anyway. Uh, so I really want to make the most of the couple of hours that I have to get this work done. Um, not normal temperatures this time of year either like I mean that's what makes it really easy to come out and work once it stays dry which now the sky doesn't look great and very promising but the forecast tells me it's going to be dry for the rest of the day so I'm going to keep going and um, get done what I can and uh, you'll probably be seeing lots of time lapses while I'm trying to get this work done in a hurry and um, I'm just home from work I have the aisle rags on me my lovely sexy boots on um, where will I show you them? There's my lovely sexy bikini wellies. <laughs> Filthy dirty uh, because the garden's absolutely soaking and I'm going to probably be over and back to the chickens with the scraps that I'm pulling out of the beds here. So um, I'll go over very quickly the beds that has to be cleared out and uh, then I'll get to work. So this is a bed that I cleared earlier on in one of my videos and I actually sewed spinach into it which was a complete failure. Uh, some of them did germinate, but then when they germinated, they proceeded to bolt. So possibly it was still too warm for them, but I wouldn't have thought so. Anyway, um, there's still spring onions on the edge of this bed. Uh, they're starting to go to rust, but I'll harvest them and save whatever I can off them to use. And then the rest will go to the chickens. Um, I'm going to pull some of these weeds. And I think this is one where I will put down cardboard and then put my fresh compost on top. Um, just it's the handiest way to get rid of those weeds and then probably it makes sense maybe to put the mypex then over that again on the top we'll see how that goes uh, this is the bed of carrots um, see there's weeds coming up through that as well um, and I have my four-legged little helper here looking for me to play with her she's mad to play with the ball so if you hear uh, funny noises in the background it's just her um, so I, this bed was covered with a net for carrot root fly. Um, I'm not sure if the threat of carrot root fly is gone yet for the season, but the wind just keeps blowing off this fabric. Uh, and funny, it, I have one, um, an identical one on the other side, although it's a different fabric, but it doesn't blow off at all. So I don't know what the difference is there, but it keeps blowing off on this side. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to just leave it off for now. Um, I'll tidy up that fabric because I will be needing it in uh, other beds over the winter. Um, so I'm hoping the threat of carrot root fly has passed. But if not, I still have the other bed. And um, these were French beans. Um, dwar um, yeah, dwarf French beans that I was growing here. Um, there's still some mature pods on, but I don't think they'd be very nice at this stage. They're gone a bit. They're gone over, to be honest. So. Um, I'll be clearing out that bed um, and topping it up with compost as well. Um, this other bed has the remains of my courgette plants and um, pea plants in at the back. Uh, there's some dill here that's going to seed. Uh, 
And I usually like to harvest the seed, but I'm not just sure if it's ready yet. It's not quite ready. I might try to clear that out and leave the dill to go to seed properly. Like it's just not cold enough, I'd say, for that to go off, to go to seed properly. Um, so we'll see what I'll do with that. Um, I want to take that trellis off there and put it on a different bed to grow peas in a different bed next year. Um, but we'll see if I get around to that today. So this is my strawberries. Um, if I get time, I might tidy that bed up a little bit. Definitely need the nettles pulled out of it. Um, not too many runners coming out of it yet. Like I said, it's still warm. Usually when it starts to get colder, they start to throw them out. But there are a few. Um, so I may pot on those little strawberry runners um, and see how they go. Uh, what else do I have? So this bed, well, there's a couple of weeds growing in this bed, but this is celery, celeriac, parsnips and leeks all in one bed. But I don't really want a whole pile of celeriac. So that's why there's only a few celeriac in there. And to be honest, I'm not even sure that they're actually growing on. Um, because they were probably overtaken by the other plants, but we'll see how we get on. Um, the parsnips, I'm not too worried about them yet. Um, I'll check to see if there's much uh, going on underneath the soil, but uh, I definitely wouldn't be harvesting them till we've had a uh, good weather, uh, a, good for good, um, a good frosty spell, because they're much sweeter. Um, but the celery would definitely need to be harvested now very soon. It's getting quite, um, you know it's getting very heavy on top with all the foliage which like i said before it's quite strong the foliage so that just goes to the chickens but you can see there the heads um or the base of the heads of celery in there harvested a few of them yesterday just for my um local cottage market food swap which went to yesterday but um i really need to get the rest of them harvested as well and they'll just be chopped up in the freezer but i'm not sure if i'll just do that today still given this uh, warm spell of weather for quite a few days yet uh, the leeks there are coming on. They're not terribly thick yet. They'll stay on uh, even in the cold weather. They're quite ha uh, frost hardy, so I'm not going to harvest them either. Uh, so the celery is all that needs to come out of that bed and the weeds and the few things that are self-seeding like marigolds there that you can see. Um, I'll pull them out because I don't need them to go to seed anymore either. This bed was absolutely full of marigolds all summer. Um, and I've been trying to get them under control a little bit. Uh, the one bed over here I took onions out of that fairly recently and I have them drying in my little uh, she shed as I call it so this needs a uh, good overhaul weeding uh, tidying up and a fresh layer of compost on the top as well and this is my swede and beetroot bed and the swedes are coming on lovely just down there you can see them starting to the bulb starting to, or the root starting to uh, swell up nicely. Um, so I will soon have Swedes, but uh, well, we were a good few weeks out yet. And this mild weather has really brought them on quite quickly. And again, they're another vegetable that I don't want to harvest until they've had uh, a wee spell of frost. So uh, the beetroots down here, probably, oh, the beetroots down here are probably getting close to being harvestable. I could harvest them as baby beets if I wanted to, but I prefer them to grow bigger. Um, sometimes I just roast these and they're lovely as baby beetroots uh, when they're roasted. But the main thing I like to make with these is beetroot relish, which I'm just shredding up the beetroot. Um, so I can use quite big beetroots for that. So I'll leave them to go for another while. Uh, the greenhouse still needs clearing out in there as well, but I'm probably going to leave that. I might do that over the weekend when it's raining. Um, I did come out here yesterday evening. I thought I had loads of lovely cherry tomatoes to harvest. And there are loads of cherry tomatoes, but they're all starting to get um, fungal issues on them now. They're splitting, um, gone overripe, and, you know, just generally they're not, they're not good to eat at the minute. So... I'll be pulling those plants out at some stage over the weekend, probably not in this video. Um, but the plan is to just take out each plant and throw them across to the chickens and let them eat away at the tomatoes all they want. Uh, not sure if the foliage would be harmful to the chickens, but I think they'll know themselves if it is or not. But um, 
like I say, that's a project for another day. Um, probably be a whole day project to get this bed ready for planting, which it does need to be planted out now in the next few weeks. Um, but I still have a butternut squash growing in there at the very back. Uh, so I want to leave that for as long as possible to see do I get butternuts off it. Um, the plants were very late going in this year. So um, it'll be a bit of a miracle if I do get butternuts. But there, there are some there forming. They're just not very big yet. Um, this is the parsley bed. I'm not just quite sure what to do with this, whether to just leave it. Um, really, I have far too much parsley in here that I don't really need much of it at all. So I'll probably just clear it out. Um, I have lettuce on the far side, different lettuces. So I can get in here. I have pots and everything in my way. I have mizuna and um, kind of a mescaline mix or something over there as well. So th it's growing on well and well ready for harvesting at this stage. Um, so I might take a wee harvest of that as well. That's the other carrot bed. I think I showed you that already. The carrots are doing really well in there and not near as much weed pressure in there, although there is a little um, as there is on this other one on the far side. Uh, so you're probably just going to see lots of time lapses. Uh, I'm going to go and get the wheelbarrow and start dunging stuff out and getting ready to um, put all these beds to bed for the winter because uh, not be planting much outdoors now um, realistically at this stage um, now you could I suppose if you wanted to but because I have space in a polytunnel and I also have the greenhouse here I'm more than likely just going to grow in there and uh, leave the outside beds with the exception of garlic and onions of course um, they will fare better outside um, and because they'll not be mature until June or July I don't want them taking up space in my polytunnel or greenhouse because I will want my warm weather crops in there before the onions and garlic are ready. Right time to get at it and stop talking and hopefully keep avoiding this rain. So I just uh, wanted to show you something I'm after finding. This is what I love about gardening. I'm always making new little discoveries. Not that it's now a major, <laughs> no big major scientific discovery or anything, but uh, I had several of these little plants pulled out before I realized these are actually strawberry plants that are grown from seed. Um, if you notice, 
So the strawberry bed is this side. Let me zoom out there. And then this is the bed right next to it. And I think I figured out exactly what's happening. My children and probably me as well. I can't just blame the kids. Uh, coming out and scoffing strawberries in the summertime and throwing the holes right behind them in the bed and uh, it looks like they've actually taken seed or taken or germinated the seeds have germinated and there's actually several of them in here in various sizes and um, there's even some little tiny little ones back here and um, so i'm going to leave them for now and i'm going to stick them in pots um because obviously they will grow on to be full mature plants um, and I can put them along with my runners and even if I don't need them myself I can give them away to probably people in my GIY group share them anyway nonetheless and also I'm not sure if you could see this in the time lapse or not but I obviously done a great job harvesting the onions um, if I recall correctly it was getting dark when I was out harvesting them and starting to rain so I was in a bit of a hurry and I'm half blind as it is um, so between all I missed a, a good crop of onions now some of them are only little tiny things but um, those little tiny red onions are actually nice uh, if you're just doing a sandwich or something so they're not going to waste I'll uh, bring them into the she shed and let them dry off and uh, just bring them in and stick them in the fridge for using straight away uh, now it's time to get the spring onions harvested as well. Uh, this works going faster than I expected, but um, I suppose when I start shoveling compost now, that'll slow me down, way, slow me way down. Okay, so I'm dodging showers here all afternoon. Um, you may have noticed it raining at times and you may not. Uh, the poor chickens, I fed them the scraps earlier on and uh, they couldn't decide whether to uh, run for the scraps or run for cover from the rain. Just started to lash a wee bit at that stage. But um, not very persistent at the minute, so I'm keeping working on um, through the whole lot just to try and get this done. I really, really, really want to get this done today. I don't want to take into it again. You know, when you start a job, you like to get it finished. Um, instead of having to take into it another day, you feel you've took, uh, even if it only took uh, 
half an hour the second day it feels like it's took you two days to do the job then so i'll just show you the progress at the minute um lots of time lapses like i said and a few more to come yet um so i've just um so you just see me clearing out the beds there and covering them with cardboard so i have the top one done um that middle one and the end one those three are done at the minute now because i've started and i have lots of cardboard i'm actually going to take in and do this one as well um i'm going to take out these dill plants um hopefully i'll bundle them together hang them upside down and um that they'll dry off enough like there are some of them dried enough like that brown one there in the back you can see the seeds are dry on it um and there's one over here the same you know so they're, they're almost ready so i think if i just bring them in and if i just bundle them up and hang them up they'll dry off enough themselves hopefully anyway but i don't want to delay the whole lot um just for the sake of a few dill seed i mean i can buy a bloody dill seed if i have to uh, i'm going to dig out these strawberry um plants now and i'm only going to just dig them with soil around them as much soil around them as i can or enough to cover the roots and um tamp uh, plant them temporarily in a wee tray until i get them potted on properly uh, just for the sake of working fast today and getting this done the um, potting on can be done in the greenhouse someday it's lashing rain whereas i don't want to be out in the lashing rain <laughs> um topping up these beds and i just remembered as well um a lot of these beds actually didn't get topped up last year at all um they, they didn't even get covered over i think some of them got covered over maybe two or three of them got covered over after christmas which was far too late and um they only got covered with cardboard and of course the, um, the cardboard just blew around the place after a while um i did put bits of timber on it to try and weigh it down but uh, i suppose with all the wind and everything and it is quite windy up here we're quite high up um so it be that little extra bit windy um so the cardboard just blew around the place so that's another reason for all the weeds and the reason covering uh, so you'll see what i'm about to do and cover i have the cardboard done already and i'm going to put a layer of compost on top of that and then if i can find the mypex i'll put um the mypex on the very top and just staple it to the um, the timbers of the beds and uh, that's to stop all those weeds coming through i'm absolutely sick to the teeth of weeds um and the mypex even though it is a light barrier it um will let possibly a small amount of light through um so i'm hoping that um between by using both the cardboard and the mypex and i mean the mypex is just to as well protect the soil from getting washed out completely over the winter as well um you know all the harsh weather uh, constant rain washing through it and freezing and thawing and snow lying on top of it all that all um degrades the compost over time so the um, my pick sitting on top of it helps preserve it that little bit um and stops the soil compacting as much as it would if the all the moisture was um constantly sitting on top of it because the my pick is you know a barrier and stops all that uh weight of the um rain or snow or whatever pushing down the soil and composting it or compacting it so um that's really the why i'm doing the double layer now i do want to put some of my overwinter onions in one of these beds which is why um i'm actually con doing this um bed that i have the deal in i'm going to put my onions in there um so it will just get um cardboard and compost and then i sow onions or plant onions in it i have overwintering onions that i have sown from seed which they're kind of it's an unusual enough thing to do so it's an experiment complete experiment and that's why i'm adamant to um to get them in into this bed on their own and see how they do um actually i sowed these seeds back in i'd say it was july i sowed them not sure i may have the date on the tray and i'm not going to be planting them today i'm just getting the bed ready for them and i probably will bring you along another day when i'm doing it but um i sowed them earlier on anyway during the summer sometime and uh, they looked desperate they germinated quite well and i um pricked them out into their individual cells and they grew for a little while and then they just died to death um and i'm blaming the poor compost and the hot weather of course and neglect too i mean i can't deny that it's a small amount of neglect on my part 
but they looked absolutely terrible I thought right never there's not a hope of getting these um overwintering onions to grow so I threw the tray out in the she shed as I call it and I just happened to go in the other day and they had just come back to life completely and I couldn't believe it so I'd say a combination of the cooler temperatures because I did have them in the greenhouse earlier in the summer I thought um I thought I was doing them a favour by bringing them along um, that bit faster so that I'd be ready to plant them out in uh, late autumn, early winter. But obviously the cooler temperatures in the she shed helped them and um, cooler temperatures in general. I mean, obviously we had very hot summer, um, but again, in the she shed, they didn't get a whole pile of water either. Whatever they're taken from the moisture in the air, that's nearly all they got. <laughs> An odd water and nothing major. Anyway, all that to say, I want to plant them in this bed, which is why I'm deciding to now um, pull out this bed because really um, every other bed has something in it that will be staying over winter, like my turnips or my swedes, I should say, two carrots. The one with the parsley has also my overwinter lettuce in it. Um, now, and I probably will clear that out, but not until the early spring. And I'll do the same job with it as well. Um, because that lettuce will grow on um and keep coming all summer or all winter. Um, but I will have more coming on, of course, in the polytunnel and the greenhouse whenever I get it cleared out. So that's one, two, three, four. My strawberries is another um perennial bed, it's five. And um the bed that the celery's in, everything else that's in that can stay in that over winter as well. So that's um that's six beds. So one of the remaining four will have to be used for my onions. Hence why I'm going to do this one because um, there's actually less weeds in this one. Um, so it doesn't need to sit with both the um, with the cardboard and the mypex. So I've chosen this one for the onions and um, I'm going to prep it now when I, ha when I am prepping all the rest.
Oh, so I've worked away now till it's dark. Um, I hope you can see me. Um, I'll not be able to do any more video. I might be able to show you this um, in the morning. Um, well, I'll try it now and I'll see how it turns out, but I'll um, re-video it again or re-record it in the morning if it's not working uh, or not looking good. Um, okay, so you see I put the MyPex down on top of the compost. I filled it up fairly high. Um, it will sink down a slight bit. You know, it's nice and fluffy now when it's after being freshly um, dug or moved so it will sink down a little bit but uh, with the mypex on top of it it won't sink that much um, so that's that bed wrapped up now I um, went to use my gas canister which I showed you in my garlic video I think but of course what do you know is ran out of gas I tried to use one of the gas lighters from the house but that wasn't working either so I ended up just cutting it when I get a replacement gas canister I will run along the end and just melt the ends of it just to um, uh, keep it together so it doesn't ravel. That's the main thing with the Mypex or the ground cover that it um, unravels over time and there's strings lying around the place uh, unsightly and um, the, it leaves it not effective then if there's like getting in around the edges where it's torn and everything else. And when I've this cut now for the bed, I will reuse this uh, year after year for the same uh, beds because they're all the beds are all the same size. So hope to reuse it every year. So uh, thanks very much for watching, even if I did keep this out uh, till all hours of the evening. Um, thank you very much for all of you who, to all of you who have subscribed so far. It's um, very encouraging to see the numbers going up and up. Um, and I have to confess, I'm kind of checking it every morning. <laughs> and um, so it really does uh, encourage me to keep going. Um, it's good to, um, to have the support of the channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Um, it really uh, pushes the video out uh, and uh, if you have already subscribed I would ask that you share the video on um, Facebook, Instagram and your other social media and um, it really helps just to push it out to a wider audience so again thanks very much for watching and um, I will get you a decent clip of this in the light it's not going to work now I'll get you a clip in the morning and I'll just put it on the end of this thanks very much for watching I'll see you in the next video bye bye